is uh, Jerry Gay, and we're in the native village of Noatak, and uh, we just got a moose, so we're cutting up some meat. Well, kind of critical for the people that live up here is getting a good, accurate forecast, um, both uh, as far as the weather, temperature and winds and everything, and then also rainfall. Um, a lot of these rivers come up pretty high pretty quick, and so if you uh, if you've got a good forecast, local forecast, real-time forecast, the uh, people can make better decisions on when to go up river, when not to go up river, when to watch out for how to how to store their equipment when they're up there. I remember as a kid, consistently August at the end of August, right when school started, we had uh, puddles that are frozen. Now we might get a couple of puddles frozen in September, but they'll melt right back. My name is Robert Kirk. Uh, my Inupiaq name is Tigluk. I have noticed some significant changes in the weather and climate and uh, the erosion on the river. Um, we've had a few years where snow was very sparse and uh, it made it really hard to travel by snow machine. And then uh, a couple years ago we had like 11 storms that were back to back. So, And when we did go out, uh, it was hard work <laughs> trying to go after animals in the deep snow. I have a camp that's 15 miles up the river and also one in Sisolik. The last part of May or the first part of June, we will work our way down to Sisolik where it's uh, time to hunt Ugruk. And if there's beluga around, we'll get beluga. As ice conditions allow, we'll go out and hunt on the ice. And it all depends on the conditions again. Uh, it seems like within the last five years, we've had to uh, wait till the rotten ice uh, moves out of the way because it's not safe to hunt on that ice that's um, it's ready to crumble basically and we'll get to the good ice which is farther out at sea but as soon as the rotten ice is off the way then the good ice moves in with the currents and we're able to hunt that. It's better for us to hunt when it's cooler out. When it's warm it's easier for the seal to be spooked when it's cooler out, um, we almost have an advantage on them. We want to make sure that we're able to keep our meat and keep our fats from the seal and the caribou uh, better. Uh, they don't spoil. Um, flies are a big issue when we're trying to hang the meat to dry or to uh, develop a skin around them so we can keep them. Today, for gas and heating fuel, it's $10 a gallon. Now I'm rationing each trip. Before, with the larger supply of fuel, we would be able to stay longer, and we would get more caribou or moose or fish or whatever it is that we're going for, and therefore our supplies would be larger when we get home. When I was growing up, we would get regular barge service for a lot of our fuel, freight, and goods. The river bed has shallowed. The uh, gravel has moved so far downstream now that um, it makes NOTAC inaccessible. So there's no freight company that'll come up the river anymore. If we can't navigate the river properly, we consume more fuel, more propellers. So now we're back to flying everything in like we did before barge service came around. Just right here at the village, I've noticed 45 feet of bank erosion within the last year. So it's uh, actually moving towards the airstrip. When you're boating in the river and you look up at the side, you can see the ice pockets that are actually dripping. And once those ice pockets have melted, then everything else just falls in. When they first say it's global warming, 
the permafrost is melting. I said, I won't believe you unless I see it with my own eyes. Now I know it's global warming. Our cold storage is melting. It can't hardly freeze anything now. Permafrost is melting. I'm an elder. I lived here all my life. We, the people in the community, knows when something declines. The global warming have caused the ice to get thin. Right now, everywhere, it's only about three, four feet thick, the thickest. Late October, we usually get the slushy ice that usually save our community from erosion because the slushy ice is so heavy. For the past few years, there's nothing. That's why uh, we have erosion here. A few years ago, one of the buildings was hanging halfway. You know those rocks there? Now we're safe from fall time. I don't worry about erosion anymore in our community. We use the blubber to keep the fire going and then we depend on driftwood. These are beds from uh, caribou's. This is Ukluk, a walrus. He's a white fish, Panaktaks. We are always trying to protect what we, what we, what we eat. Palugas, we don't hunt anymore because there's nothing in July. When the mining company was creating a port where they could load up the ore, we try to tell them uh, that uh, they will block the migration of uh, Belugas, they said no. They said they will get used to used to the port, and uh, the migration won't stop. We try to tell them, uh, you cannot tame the wild animal. My name is Pete Lisbon. Our uh, location would be in the, right about here somewhere. At one time they said you tied a hook like land with the point of it near Cape Lisbon. Land forms from the north to the south side, and every so many years, one ridge is formed from the land part from the north side comes off. The seawall they put up has lessened the impact pretty much. It's kind of stopped the erosion process, but then it's still coming off because due to change of the wind patterns. That um, ridge, once uh, fall time comes and the waves start getting big, sometimes the first smaller waves will come up and then it makes a coat 
it gets icy. And then when the big waves, hopefully, you know, and then it won't, it, it's harder for it to do damage when it's ice. You gotta stay out there when it's starting to open up. That's when the whales start coming. The weather, you gotta watch it. Gotta know when to stay out and what kind of weather to stay in. Now we change so fast you can open the lead real quick, real quick, because our ice is getting thin, getting thinner and thinner. I don't know how many times I got drifted out, but I would find a way to go. Getting scary now. Gotta, gotta know the weather. Gotta know where to stay when you're out. You can't just go out, you know. You gotta know where the good ice is and the bad ice. No matter what kind of ice conditions we have, I think we'll always find ways to go out there because we're going after the whale. And that's our main source of food to feed us through throughout the winter. I don't think anything will stop us, except maybe an oil spill. Without the whale, we wouldn't be who we are. It's our identity. It's our food, our feast grounds, our housing, our shelter. Like my grandfather, we had tone subs. This is one of the ways in which you live through the cold winter, which we've lost now. This is the last of the sod houses that have lived through the old village of Tikera. Jimmy Kaliwak's first plywood house in Tikera, Point Hope, Alaska. When we were first ever plywood houses in Point Hope. To hunt an animal that is um, the largest creature in the ocean. And going in after with the skin boat and paddling and harpooning such a, a great animal that is so respected. You know, it's the gift of the whale. The whale is, is just everything to us. And having the having a skin boat just makes us connected to the animal itself. My name is Lorena Williams, Kupnak, from Kotzebue. We're right up on top of Kotzebue, the town itself, and we're picking cranberries. Last time around, before snow falls. Normally, I go to, um, we call it Salok Art Camp, on Cruising Stern to pick um, salmon berries. Different nowadays, people work all the time. They do it in their spare time or when the weather is good. This is where I actually live here at Sisolik. Kotzebue is off. My name is Cyrus Harris, and I work for Manilik Association for the Elders Traditional Foods Program. This program is designed to keep Nikipak or native foods on our elders' table who can't provide for themselves anymore. Some of them went out and get some fish for elders. So they called in and gave us a chance to put some away. All the villages throughout uh, the Maniluk service area is involved with this program as far as the hunter support. So there's always something different on the table. Depends on um, what what the weather is in for us, you know. We'd be uh, gathering whitefish now with a regular subsistence net. We wouldn't necessarily put that fish trap out up until later when we have a better idea when it's going to be cooling off more without 
that sudden warm trend. My name is Tracy Gregg and I'm the um, coordinator for the Manilik Supplemental Food Program. So we offer um, nutritious foods for pregnant women, um, breastfeeding postpartum infant or women, infants, children under five. We serve all the villages and Point Hope. Alaska is unique just because of how remote everything is. You know, if you go to a store in the village, the chances of them having, you know, eggplant and squash and grapes is zero percent, you know. It's just the nature of where we live. Things like that don't ship as easily as, you know, apples and oranges. And well, even here in Kostabi, when there's a storm, you know, when planes can't come in for a few days, the shelves of the store are bare. You know, not everybody is able to go out hunting or berry picking or fishing. You know, some families can't rely on those resources either. I guess people love to talk about the weather everywhere you go in the world, but around here it seems like we're more relentless and more, and more reliant. We listen to the weather all the time and we talk about it. <laughs> and we, uh, depending on your life, my life I plan pretty much every day depending on the weather. My name's Seth Kantner. I've been commercial fishing since I was nine, which would be 1974. We were paid, you know, somewhere in the vicinity of 50 cents a pound. The price of the dock was 26 for most of the uh, season, which was really, really poor, considering how nice our fish are. The whole past fishery had been sort of catch as many as you can, heap them in a big tote, ship them out. I was told by this buyer they wanted a knot stacked in, in piles, setting a shorter net for a shorter period of time, pulling each fish out while it's alive, bleeding it, trying to float it in ice water. If we have a warm, sunny summer, it's real shallow here, the water temperature goes up. So that fish you're yanking out of the water is suddenly, you know, 59 or 62 degrees. And then you have to try to get him or her <laughs> cold before you, you ship it out. If those fish were even five or 10 degrees colder, it's a, that's a big deal. I bring them back here, I try to chill them before boxing them in small boxes, putting them directly on Alaska Airlines and shipping them out. Um, my name is Sikorak Martha Whiting. I was born and raised in Kotzebue. Ultimately became mayor of the North Arctic Borough and served two terms. I got my degree in natural resource land management because I wanted to help make sure that our lands are protected while making sure our lands are protected to serve its purpose as being the grocery store of our people. It's where we get our fish, our caribou, our berries. Our land is sacred to us. Safety is becoming a bigger concern. It has not only become more unpredictable, but it's come, become very different at certain times of years. And I remember looking out the window and it was like a sci-fi wind that, um, that you just don't see this time of year. You could see the start. it was starting to break up in February. You never see breakups in February. You know, it's solid, it's frozen. And you could see the ridges starting to come up. Thank goodness we had that, um, that seawall that was just starting to be built. So it kind of slowed down the pressure ridges from coming up. So we had overflow of water on the base road heading down south of Kotzebue, and then our road coming up here. There's water on the road heading to the hills that way. Kotzebue is a low-lying community. I think it's a matter of time when the waves start lapping onto the hillside because we're flat, there's water behind us, there's water in front of us and it's just a matter of preparing strategies to get to higher ground, making sure there's uh, safe places for people to evacuate to. My name is Ross Wool, Ross Schaefer Sr. I was born and raised here in Kotzebue. Every spare moment in between all those years of work, I hunted and trapped. Around this area, the direction of the wind is gonna dictate what the day's gonna be like. Guaranteed. A prevailing north wind means that all the water is sucked out. We have nothing but low tide. And that hardly happens anymore. The winds blowing from the south or southeast winds, it is eating away all the lands on the north side of our area. And so all the lands that were being deposited with gravel for thousands of years with the prevailing west winds, these new winds are taking it all back.
My name is Alvin Nightingale Sr. Love to hunt and gather food and live off the land and sea. Subsistence is a very important thing in our lives and you know, if we didn't have it, how can we survive, I mean? We depend on it 365 days out of the year. I don't think it would even be religious, you know? People just have to move on and try to live where it's cheaper to buy a hamburger or buy a can of pop or something or whatever they you know have to have each day. And, and if uh, the climate changes, I mean, we're just gonna have to deal with it. We're just gonna have to live with it and adapt to it. But I know for a fact that it's changing. It, it doesn't show it right off the bat, but it's slowly, you know, showing up in our land and our rivers, our ocean, our tides. We're relying less and less on the foods that are shipped in and purchased and using more of the things that we could gather on our own. When I thought about the rise in fuel prices, uh, heating fuel and gas, I looked back and realized that over time my husband and I had been, yes, we'd been spending more on fuel, but we're using it more to subsist because not only did the fuel prices rise, but everything else went up. This is the Deering Native store. I've worked here since 2004. The tribal government owns it. We're kind of at the mercy of the airlines and things happen along the way. You know, if a box of lettuce, for instance, sits in Kotzebue an extra week and finally shows up, you know, it's rotting and molding by then. So, so we try to use our freezers as much as possible. Um, our customers rely on us for for a lot of those things that we can't come up with locally, which is a lot, a lot of starches, a lot of vegetables and fruit, especially during the winter. That point out here, we get what we call Coville or Arctic myrrh. Geese, crane, branch, go to Guadalupe Lakes and stuff. First part of July, we go out and get our eggs for the our system here, it's a water haul system. We either got to get the water from the washed area or we get it from the river. Getting 100 gallons of water is, you know, not cheap, I mean. Another project we had, that, that bridge, that's over a $100,000 bridge. We had a lot of different projects going on in, in the 80s. You see the seawall, that was built in 84. Before we built that, it used to be low. In fact, when it got rough, it used to go under the school building. In fact, it helped because you could see there's more beach again. We had a real violent storm and it, and it held. This spring they had to fix the road up by where they, Airstrip is the high water washed out most of the road, and we they couldn't get across because the water was too deep. So we didn't have plane for five, six days, I guess, last spring. We get flood every spring. It don't affect the village; it just affect the roads mostly. We've had more high water in the summer than I used to see. Covered the flats all the time. I'll say that's kind of good. They say, how come? I say, all those ponds where the mosquitoes are larvae, they get washed out when the tide go out. <laughs> we get a lot of high wind now, but we're fortunate that most of the high wind come the south. Sure, we get high water, but it, it don't, it's no rough water on this side, this way.
name's Tim Gavin and I've been mayor for the past three years. It was a clear day. You could see the Selwick Hills. You could see our Lung Mountains. You could see all of our, you could see our Clem Mountain. And this is one of our favorite spotting points for animals. Muskox, bear, moose, caribou, reindeer, wolves, wolverines. My name is Emil Carter. I'm originally from Norwich. My Eskimo name is Sheet Jack. Today I can call Buckland my home. We always have fresh sea life. This bearded seal out here, is, we, we get them from out here mostly, from right here, mm -hmm. in the springtime. And this time of the year, these small ones, they come in, and they'll be around here till it freeze. As our river is getting wider because of the erosion, it's getting shallow and shallower, and right from Buckland on up, as the gravel come down springtime, we can practically walk across our river in, in fall time. And it doesn't erode as bad as uptown. Uptown erodes way worse. All this needs to be armored. Otherwise we're going to lose how many million dollar school. We average bad floods every 20, 25 years. And the last one we had was back in 84. 16 homes had water go in the door. And look how high they are because of our flooding. If ice came up here and destroyed that, you know how bad that would be? 12,000 gallons of fuel on the river. Right now, this is supposed to be all snow. No idea where winter is. I mean, our rivers and our lakes actually froze over already. And they all thawed out. Some of the lakes you could even walk on, they were so frozen. Boats are back in the river, back in the summer. We normally get caribou in the first part of August. Back then in the day when I was in high school, and it's already October 16, and the caribou finally came in, I believe, two days ago now. Right here, actually, in this spot right here, we um, do tomcod fishing this time of the year. We're still boating. And that's a big difference change for our area. Just right down the edge of the bluffs, all the way from right here to Buckland, there's the um, state trail that we use to go to Salwood. And then from Selwick, it'll go to Amber, Shungnak, and Kobuk. And either way, you can go around, and it'll go to, uh, from Selwick to Narvik, and then onward to Kotzebue. You can see the stakes right on the edge right there. My name is Janet Geary, and I'm from Buckland. I worked here at the Buckland Native Store since 2010. Most of our stuff come in through airlines. When the weather is bad, our um, orders get held at uh, airlines. And if they couldn't come on that airlines, they move to a different airlines. Sometimes it takes about three weeks for our orders to come in. Sometimes they come in moldy. It's good for our breeze. Summertime, some of our stuff come in flat. Our furniture and stuff we get in the barge every other summer. And just right in front is the mouth of the river. Everybody depends on caribou here in the Kobuk region. I mean, that's our main staple of food, I'd say. You gotta be able to live independent if you're gonna live out here in the bush. You can't depend on the store. So that's ground moose. And here's a 
caribou heart there. Air freight has just gone up in the past several years. It's just dri driven up our, uh, our, all the prices in all the stores. If you compare the prices, like a uh, little Jarmini's, little 16 ounce Jarmini's, I mean, it costs like 14 to 16 dollars. I'm Alvin Williams, Eskimo name Kitok. I've lived here in Amler pretty much all my life. I do maintain the airport here in Ambler. I've done it since uh, 98. We've got north-south runway and uh, east-west runway. We do get a lot of wind. That's why we've got two runways here in the village. We'll be blowing north wind here, 15, 20 miles an hour, and Chungnak is 30 miles east of us. and. Just the way we're situated in the mountains. And we go up to Shungnak, and halfway to Shungnak, it's calm. Our airport is almost two miles from the village, and we had so much snow, I got stuck several times just getting out there by snow machine. I know that put a lot of big hurt on the village because we had uh, nobody was able to get out to get firewood. They just had to go with, hopefully they had what they had in their yard would be able to last. My name's Don Williams. I live here at Ambler, Alaska. About every hour that they, they give the local weather for Kotzebue and, the, and the, like Buckland, Deering, No Attack, Kiana, Upper Kobuk and stuff like that. I listen to that every day because that's always been uh, a determining factor of what I'm going to do that day or what's going to happen. Well, I take care of the airport, so I listen to that radio every day. I mean, I flip it on first thing in the morning and see what the forecast is. And get uh, KTU news, weather. I can look it up on uh, my little phone. I mean, I could be five miles out of town. We're way up on a high bank, so we're we're pretty good as far as flooding, other than to keep an eye out on your boat. During the spring runoff, a lot of times we've had our front street here in Amber go underwater. We can get uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 to sometimes even 20 feet of water in the spring runoff. I noticed the bluffs below here below Ambler. I've noticed this past couple of years that it had moved back a good 15 feet easily, and they're they're probably about over 100 foot high banks. Um, my name is Harry Alex Marina Katuk, and I was born Upper Kobuk River at um, Shugnak, Alaska, and I was raised here in Ambler, Alaska for the past 33 years. During the springtime, all the ice comes down from both of the river and meets right here because of the erosion of the spring breakup and the high water coming up. 